Good. Uh, the last, uh, the first uh, slide of time, we are over. We identified, we, we tried to define some how, how we can approach, how we can describe the concept of the time. The first one, if we are looking at human evolution, the first uh, milestone of understanding and describing and catching the time, this is the calendar system. Two kinds of calendar system introduced in the human history are uh, sun and the moon-based calendar system. After the uh, introduction of uh, uh, agrarian revolution, increased the importance of seasons. Why? Because the uh, phenological uh, seasons determine the rhythm of early civilization. The next one, when appeared the first uh, uh, liturgical system, the liturgical hours, uh, it somehow dated the rhythm of life. And finally, uh, in the Middle Ages, appeared the mechanical clocks. Uh, very important devices which are using for somehow a scattering of time, a sundial, the cheapest version, but uh, there is uh, some weakness during cloudy weather and during the night it's not function. Water clock introduced by uh, Greek uh, scholars and incense burner and a candle. It's a timer function, like a, a timer. Uh, somebody know the movie of Ip Man about the master of uh, Bruce Lee. Nobody? Yeah. Uh, and for example, uh, in the, uh, for example, timer used a two master fight, timed with the uh, incense burner. Come in. Uh, and finally appeared the mechanical clock. This was the last slide in the last week. Look at the following. If we are approaching to the time as a disciplinary problem, it's a scientific problem, a history and the historian introduced two kinds of time concept. The first one, a linear, irreversible and cumulative time concept. What mean the linear, irreversible and cumulative? In the 19th century, when appeared the history like a discipline, uh, introduced a uh, time concept which helped to describe the human history is a linear. Started with Australopithecus, early subspecies of human, and the same trajectory followed each fox, each nation, the same trajectory until the recent time. Therefore, uh, it's a global trajectory imagined for the human evolution from the hunting gathering to the modern industrial revolution. The same trajectory, but the time of, uh, for example, antiquity, time of Middle Ages, time of modern time, it's different, like a rhythm of human. For example, recently, if we are looking at the trajectory of human life, which is the longest one? Childhood, adult, no, adolescent, adolescent, why? Because in the modern time, not necessary to work so heavy and so early. Uh, for example, uh, there is a famous Hungarian poet, uh, Sándor Petőfi. It's uh, lived in the uh, first half of the 19th century. Wrote in this poem that adolescence only one or two years. Why? Because in the peasant society, necessary to work necessary to work very early. I remember I socialized in the peasant society. Um, uh, I was eight years old when introduced the household farming. I was very, uh, very small and not so heavy, but this is the age of introduction. And everything happened much earlier. For example, uh, the age of marriage changed around 18, or 19 years old, recently, much, much later. Therefore, a little bit same, imagine, whole of the whole of the society that follow same trajectory. Some nations, some civilization perform some phases of this unique, not unique, unified trajectory, smaller, uh, shorter time or longer time. Uh, for example, uh, in the uh, uh, civilization uh, modernized later, 
able to perform much small, much shorter time, the phases of modernization compared with the forerunners uh, in this case. Okay, same trajectory, perform each nation. The second one, irreversible. No machinery of time going back to the antiquity and no, only there is one way out from the recent time into the direction of future. No other way, no other way. Irreversible. The history is irreversible. Sorry, I have a small flu. I, I hope not COVID-19. Uh, so, uh, uh, and the last one, uh, cumulative, cumulative, cumulative. How we can imagine the history according to, uh, um, it was a joke, uh, but not a cumulative, but the COVID. Uh, I don't know why, but I survived the COVID without any symptoms. In my family, more members of my family infected, and I have a personal relation. I don't know why I know infected. I'm not enough valuable for this <laughs> kind of uh, uh, virus. Okay, uh, what means accumulate? Accumulation. A 19th century historian imagined the, uh, the, the history like a giant puzzle. A giant puzzle. Each of human imagine one deed of human, one piece of the puzzle. And the job of historian taking the puzzle, identify the puzzle, and take the right place. And finally, we understand whole of the picture of human history. It was a very popular in the 19th century, but recently out of fashion. But in the 19th century, imagine the history. It's each nation followed the same trajectory, one way, not irreversible, and it's a huge picture of, of history, able to understand by history. But at the turn of the uh, 19th and 20th century, introduced a new concept of uh, uh, time. It's a cycle or cyclical uh, concept of the time. Very interesting, not philosopher, neither philosopher uh, or nor uh, historian introduced, but economist. Economist. Why? Because at the turn of the, the last third of the 19th century, proliferated stock of exchange. And uh, somebody with, uh, watched uh, Wolf of uh, Wall Street. It's very impressive. What would like to be the uh, broker? To be rich. And which is the good way? Forecasting the future. Forecasting the future. Recently, there are two ways for forecasting of future. The one way, modeling. Modeling the situation. Modeling for economic or, or, or natural processes which is the probably majority of audience came from the uh, faculty of economics, I suppose. Therefore, you are knowledge is about the modeling. The simplest version of model, the Coke automat. Take one coin, receive a bottle of Coke. It's very simple. But the mechanism of modeling are the same, but majority of model recently more complicated. Not so easy work with the model. Uh, I, some part of my career, I participated in modeling of atmosphere, meteorological model. It's very complicated. And recently, look at, for example, the weather forecast. Not able to forecast the real weather. In, sometimes increase the probability of the forecast, reliability of the forecast, but no 100% reliable forecast. Because recently, the A, uh, artificial intelligence and the computer capacity, not enough for modeling atmosphere. Therefore, modeling is a very efficient device, but no final solution. This is one way. Other way of modeling, uh, uh, it's a uh, 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 big data-based uh, process analysis. If we are huge quantity of data, about the price, about the economic, uh, for example, salary, uh, uh, trade data, and so and so, we can analyze the trajectory of moving this kind of indicator of economy. To the end of 19th century, 
founded the statistical office, founded the institution and the government and so on and so, collected so many data that started to analyze the process of economic activities. Therefore, the second way of forecast of the future are process analysis, the cycle analysis. And how able forecast the future based on the economic data, if able identify the rhythm, the change of the rhythm. Like for example, the the the, the how the name the health rhythms. Health rhythm. Follow the same rhythm. They follow the same rhythm. And but not so easy. Not so easy. Because in the economy are very are a lot stochastic and uh, uh, un, for un, uh, understandable uh, change and regular change. Therefore, the job of first generation of cycle analysis, analyzing the changing, uh, the, the, uh, the repeating cycle in the economic activity. There are a lot of different concepts concerning the, uh, the, the cycle. Probably you know the name of uh, uh, Karl Marx, a philosopher and poly, not uh, poly, uh, economist and, and philosopher lived in the middle of the 19th century. Uh, his main volume is uh, Capital. The volume of Capital, first and second and the third volumes. And he imagined a cycle. This is the steady level here. This is one cycle according to Marx. And he imagined the trajectory of capitalism, <coughs> crisis, from crisis. From, this, is the, this is the horizon of him. But a Kondrakiev, it's other economist, a Russian economist, used a basically different concept of the cycle. He imagined the cycle with A cycle, A cycle, and the B cycle. And you can identify this is all of the cycle, uh, A phases and B phases. You can identify one cycle according to uh, Kondrakiev, it's a Russian scholar, with help of three data. Starting date, turning date, and the closing date. Okay, if we are looking at the history of the cycle, we can find a lot of different uh, cycle. I show to you only three types of the cycle. A short, cyc a short cycle, a British uh, scholar, Kitchen identified at the beginning of the 20th century. It's a, a change between three and four years. It's more exactly 40 months. Uh, Juglar, it's a French uh, economist, uh, identified in the, uh, in the 70s or 80s of the 19th century a uh, six to eight years long cycle. And finally, the longest cycle, which economists identified, a uh, uh, 40 to 60 years long cycle, a uh, Russian score, Kondrakiev. Uh, uh, this is the different. Why so interesting for us? Because if we try to describe, for example, today, this is the 14th, it's a Valentine's Day. This is the, <laughs> or for some people, it's an Independence Day, but it's. <laughs> Okay, uh, if we are looking at this, uh, uh, this date, 40 uh, February, and this is the scientific, scientific work identify the, not only the different cycle, but interaction and interference between different cycles. And if somebody is very clever, able to forecast the future and earn huge money. And very interesting, it's in the last uh, week, uh, last uh, uh, lecture, I spoke about, uh, um, it's possible not spoke, but I would like, uh, I want it, anyway, that uh, why so important the uh, rational thinking? Because recently, the driving force of life is a rational decision, and earn money and the wellness everywhere. But very important to realize 
it's happened a different manner in different historical time. For example, in the traditional time, the focus of the life was after the death, salvation. Each effort focused for salvation. Recently, recently very difficult to understand. Somebody imagined and focused this effort for salvation. I don't know why, I don't know which is the better one, but necessary to thinking that the driving force of the life change time by time, change from community to community and person by person. Okay, but it's not a philosophical uh, course. Turn back to the question of economy. Good. Uh, a little bit later, a historian reacted for the uh, problem of the cycle. The first historian who tried to introduce the cycle thinking to history was Ernst Labrus in France. It was a good period for uh, scientific researches. Where is the stick? Here. And you can see the date of publishing. It's during the last year of Second World War. And Slavus working at university, no problem, no job, and very easy to thinking about the problem of 18th century. And uh, very interesting, a little bit similar, the story of Fernand Brodel. Fernand Brodel is a very important uh, person of uh, 20th century history. According to quite generally accepted uh, uh, opinion, he was the most important historian of the 20th century. It's very uh, rare. Why? Because the 20th century dominated uh, uh, English-based uh, international uh, scientific world. And he was a French people. He was a French people. In the, uh, there is a French people in the audience? No. A French people generally never learn foreign language. It's a quite large national community. Uh, learning foreign language is very complicated. Other option, other option. Uh, but uh, he uh, spoke quite a lot in English, but he became very popular because uh, uh, policy uh, and the politics of education in France quite good. Invest huge amount to the, uh, to the education and translated uh, a little, uh, probably you know, uh, the most important competitor of the Hollywood is a French movie because receive, and it is good and, and true for the education. Similarly, uh, there is a very centralized, but very well-financed uh, education system. If somebody would like to teach abroad, receive a salary of diploma, diplomacy. Much higher, much higher. Okay, but turn back to the story. Fernand Brodo, uh, because would like to earn a little bit money, uh, taught uh, French history and civilization in Algeria and later in Brazil. And before the Second World War, came back to France. And in the, after the war between uh, Germany and France, which the French people and the French army lost, close to the prison of uh, soldier. And whole of the Second World War performed in the prison. It's a camp, not a real prison, in the camp of prison. And majority of early works wrote in the prison. It's a fellowship. Received meals, gardening and lodging, and wrote a first volume. Very interesting, no footnotes. No, why? Because uh, the uh, uh, German army didn't left go to the archives. But without footnotes published. Okay, but turn back to the story. This French scholar introduced the cyclical thinking. Uh, look at, for example, a uh, Brodo. A uh, Brodo tried to describe how unfolded a uh, world economy. According to Brodo, starting date of world economy is somehow in the middle of the uh, 13th century. In the middle of 13th century. We can describe one cycle, like you in the case of Kondrakev, starting date, turning date, 
and closing date. The starting date of first first global cycle based to Europe in that time of world economic system started in the middle of 13th century. Why? Because to the 13th century economic sense became so strong a European economy was able to produce a profit, a benefit, which circulated whole of the continent. A, a step to the phase of global trade. The turning date is the middle of the uh, 14th century. This is the age of great plague, uh, plague epidemics. One third of European population died. Very important, call your attention, that the crisis, not only disaster, this was the deepest human disaster, whole of the European history, but the disaster, it's a challenge situation. And if somebody able to find the good answer for the challenge in personal, in community, and the global scale, it's open new way. Therefore, the modern Europe started from this crisis. In the middle of mid ages, in the middle of mid why? Because the feudal system wasn't so efficient solving the regional and the, and the, and the subsistence crisis problem introduced after the crisis the regional fires, regional currency, like Euro recently, but the, on the time it was a, 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 a Florentine florin and the ducats of Ven uh, Venetian ducats. Regional currency increased the speed of trade and facilitated the te technology of the trade. And uh, introduced the centralized state. Because in the feudal system, it's small independent units existed. State, 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 landlords, landlords. And started transform the core area to the direction of absolute centralized state. OK, this is the turning date. And the closing date is the beginning of 16th century. This is the starting period of great geographical discoveries. When Europe and the European sailors opened the way, opened the gate for the other civilization toward Americas, toward Asian and Indian Ocean civilization. Okay, the second cycle start when uh, closed the, fir the, 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 the first one, and the turning day, the middle, the middle of the 17th century. Why? Because in the Middle Ages, the richest part of Europe are Mediterranean area, Italy, Venice, Genoa, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Sicily, and uh, uh, Iberian uh, Peninsula. And this rich area, and the southern part of the France, this area, it's down. And uh, Atlantic Ocean and the western part of Europe, up turn the weight point of European civilization. Okay, uh, closing day is uh, the middle of, uh, middle of uh, uh, 18th century. This is the dawn of industrial revolution and the dawn of political revolution, which started with the French Revolution. Why so important? Because industrial revolution opened a new way for example, technological level, uh, I spoke about uh, um, energetical concept of human history. No? Okay. Uh, we can describe the human history not only according to ruling dates of, of king, emperor, general, and the great man, but we can uh, describe the human history as consequence of sun, solar radiation. You know the sun. In the sun, uh, there is a, a thermonuclear fusion between, between helium and hydrogen. Not back. Hydrogen to helium. It's a thermonuclear uh, uh, fusion. This is the sun. And if we are speaking about uh, uh, energy, 
Very, very important to realize, I hope you remember, the first law of energy. If not, the first law of energy mean in the universe, the quantity of energy steady, no energy production, no energy consumption, only transformation, different form of energy. If we are looking at human evolution based to thermonuclear fusion of the sun. Uh, thermonuclear fusion. In consequence of solar radiation, the solar beam arrived to the surface of Earth. Three million British English in American billion. Three million years ago appeared a bacteria, bacteria able to transform the sunbeam. It's named a photosynthesis. Two chemical energy, thermonuclear energy, two. I didn't spoke, no? Okay, you remember, no? Spoke, okay. Uh, why? You know this story, I, I don't want to repeat. Very important to identify. Uh, uh, Time by time, I repeat the same stories. <laughs> this is the trump of, uh, of education, because uh, in my brain, there is a limited quantity of information. And the uh, most, most efficient form is repeating the same, 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 same more times, but it's uh, very boring. OK, uh, industrial revolution take to the new level of uh, uh, energetic system. Why? Because it introduced the fossil fuels, coal, oil, gas, and later in the 20th century, uh, uh, nuclear energy. Therefore, step to step up energy to, to higher energetic level. If we are looking recently, which are the pillars of modern world economy? Cheap energy and cheap water. Until we are able to construct these and, and reconstruct these kind of the pillars, will function. Look at, for example, a global warming, which is the most flexible, uh, flexible answer of uh, modern society for the global warming. The smart energy. Sorry? The smart energy maybe? No, not, not only. The greenhouse gas uh, yes, is like... It's a... Uh, how the name is? Uh, it's uh, air conditioning. Air conditioning. What mean the air conditioning? Making small places, even the plaza, even the supermarket, which ideal for, uh, for our needs. Artificial small uh, places, like for example buildings, like uh, uh, supermarkets, like this kind of the building. Heating and the air conditioning system. H how function? And when able to function, until we are able to produce enough, kind, enough quantity of energy. Okay, turn back. Uh, uh, partly uh, industrial revolution and partly the political revolution. It's very important and it's possible, I will repeat myself from the first lecture, that start a new period of history. Why? Because before the French Revolution, dominated the political life and the function of the, of the state, a uh, logic of dynasty, logic of empire. For example, in the case of, in the case of Hungarian kingdom, half of the, uh, of the inhabitants of Hungarian kingdom weren't Hungarian. But not important, not important, because the driving force was the social status. Some people citizen, some people peasant, some people noblemen. And the driving force, the social status. And in consequence of the uh, French Revolution and the, and, the, and the intellectual revolution of the, of the modern time, the driving force became a common language and a common culture. But it's, it's, it's very, very harsh change of that. And some area, for example, in Central Europe, a different nation live together. It's not possible making a, 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 a real and, a, and, a, and, a, and the logical boundaries between different nations. Because it's mixed 
in villages, mixed in the in the in the in the uh, in the in the urban area. I remember, for example, I am part of geography. And with my geographer friends, we traveled in Yugoslavia during the civil war. And very, it was very easy to identify where lodged the minorities. For example, we arrived to the district of the city, and the majority of, uh, of buildings unhorted and free burned down. On this place live the minorities. And the life depend on the social and the, and the proportion. In Serbian area, the Croatian became the victims, and Croatian area, the Serbian became the victims. No logic, no logic. In the civil war, wars, which I can imagine. Okay, turn back. It's a dawn of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, modern time. It's a modernization in the case of industry, in the case of, uh, of uh, formation of the state. <coughs> the first cycle start when they close the former one, and the turning point, the turning date, is uh, uh, 1870. Why? Because this is the last year of negotiation which closed a uh, Napoleonian wars. Why so important? Introduced a new logic, a new the, the nationalism. Nationalism, this is the first one. A new logic of, uh, of the legal system, because in the age of empire, a different jury take consideration in the offer of nobleman, offer of citizen, and offer of, uh, of um, uh, peasant. And after the modernization and nationalization of the state, appear a very famous concept of French Revolution, égalité. Each people equal on the jury, equal. It's a new phase of uh, function of the state. Okay, and the closing day is uh, uh, 1896. Why? Because this was the last peaceful decade before the First World War. At the beginning of 20th century, uh, in the northern part of Africa, later in the Balkan, Balkan Peninsula, one local war followed each other. And this was the last peaceful decade. Okay, and finally, we are living recently, according to this concept, uh, in the fourth phase, and the starting day is uh, when goes the firmer one, and the turning point is the 70s. Why? According to Brodel, and not only Brodel, but generally the, econom uh, the historian of economists, the greatest uh, recovery unfolded after the Second World War. Uh, look at only one indicator. The population of, of uh, world, the world population, on the time of Second World War, 2.5 million. And to the end of 20th century, Six million, and recently we, before or after, eight million. This kind of, this kind of huge recovery, unprecedented in the human history. It's up, but the trajectory of recovery, it's broken in the 17th century. This was the fossil fuel crisis in the economic history. And recently, according to Brodel, the trajectory of global cycle down. It's not good news, but we are uh, uh, to answer for this situation. Uh, first, it's a theory. It's possible, not true, not true. Secondly, the majority of problem is a Buddhist uh, mansion. Majority of problems the people made for themselves. Therefore, we may happy on the time of economic decline. Okay, turn back. This is a secular cycle. This is a historical concept of the cycle. Uh, if we are looking at historical events, very important separate and divide a scale of historical event. According to Brodel, we can analyze a historical event 
uh, according to time. Time, the term, not the term. Uh, first category is a short term. For example, this course unfold in the frame of short term. Short term means it's less than one year. We start in February and we will close at the end of June. It's short term. The second time dimension, medium term, it's a temps de conjoncture. The first one, temps de l'événement, it's a French. Uh, temps de conjoncture, it's one to ten years. It's a middle term, medium or middle term. It's maybe for your university studies and fall in the middle term. And finally, the long term, long durée, it's a French, uh, like for example, a history of uh, uh, evolution of uh, uh, world economy, evolution of, uh, for example, Muslim church, uh, evolution of, of, uh, of uh, Christian dom. Uh, there are some event of the, some, uh, some uh, construction and the process in the human history which we can describe only in the long term. Why is so important thinking about the long term longer than the generation rhythm of the human? Because, uh, like for example, uh, it's, a, it's a metaphorical approach, if we are, for example, uh, shipping and on, the, on the ocean and veiling the water, and each situation, the horizon, defined for us which is the position of the ship. Look at, for example, if somebody uh, is uh, living on the time of 30 years war, the category of normality, it's adapt to the warfare situation. This is a normal. The people kill each other. This is the normal. If somebody, for example, living in the glorious year of 19th century, this is the peaceful and, and very prosperous situation. This is the normal. Normal. Okay. And finally, if we are looking at uh, human history, it's an open and large scale, we can identify three processes which are linear, irreversible, and cumulative. If we are looking large scale, the first one, a world population. It's a green line, exponential, exponential project. But uh, if I told to you, I don't want to repeat. But uh, I spoke about a uh, demographical transition. I spoke. Yeah. Uh, no? at least one student. Demographical transition means that uh, there is a uh, fertility and, and uh, mortality, no? No, no okay. Uh, very important because repeating, repeating, repeating is uh, happening a lot, but uh, it's very, uh, very boring. Why I would like to speak about dem uh, demographical discoveries? Because if we are looking at the trajectory of human, the trajectory of world population, the first impression that it's it will continue until the human disaster. It's not true, it's not true. If we are looking at the trajectory, the population of human in the 70,000 uh, uh, before Christ, 70,000, uh, 70, was 5,000 people, whole of the Africa. 5,000, very near to extension. Uh, on the time of uh, uh, Christian starting date of Christian calendar, it's estimate 150 million. Uh, at the beginning of 19th century, one million, and uh, on the time of uh, second on the time of uh, Second World War, 2.5. Uh, at the end of 20th century, six, and this is the trajectory. But we stabilized probably the human population on the Earth around 12 and 60 million. Why? Because there is a rhythm of uh, uh, demographical transition. Demographical transition means, if we are looking at the demographical nature of, of human, uh, we can identify four phases. The traditional time, in the traditional time, uh, natality, fertility, and the mortality change around uh, 40 per thousand. 30, 40 per thousand. If 
the fertility higher, for example, the scattered line is a fertility, and the continuous is the mortality. Is the fertility higher, uh, population increase, of mortality higher, decrease? It's a name, a traditional steady phases. But at the beginning of 19th century, in consequence of, uh, uh, of new technology introduced to the agriculture, ag agrarian revolution, and partly for revolution of transport, because in consequence of proliferation of, uh, of uh, railway network, in the continental area, we're able to transport one place to other huge quantity of uh, everyday's, uh, uh, everyday's uh, uh, products uh, and the meals and everything. Therefore, in consequence of appearance of railway network, disappear the traditional subsistence system. Traditional subsistence crisis mean uh, that one village, everybody die, other villages uh, fed the wheat with the pigs. No, no problem. After the uh, revolution of uh, transport, disappeared the, sub the, the traditional crisis. It's named a security of feeding. Security of feeding improved. In consequence of that, mortality decreased very quickly, but uh, fertility left very high. Why? Because in the, uh, in the uh, traditional society, the fortune of poor people the children. Why? Because in this time, no uh, pension, no civil, uh, uh, how the name is, uh, uh, civil security, no people paying the old people a pension. Therefore, the condition of survival, it's large family. Because the rate of infantile mortality is 50%. For one adult necessary to birth. Therefore, the rate of birth left very high for a long time. But after some time, stabilized our mortality around 10 per thousand and start to decrease the fertility. Why? For two reasons. One of the first reason uh, uh, curing and the medical technology improve. Therefore, not necessary to bore so many, so much uh, 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 children. Because almost each children survived the first 10 years. In the traditional time, only half of the, uh, of the, of the children survived the 10th the, the anniversary. Therefore, reliability of survival improved for, for, uh, for, the, for the young generation. First, secondly, change the structure of life. Because in the traditional religious people, the children is a participant and the worker of household. But in the urban area, it's basically different. Necessary to learn elementary school and for the real career, necessary to perform secondary school and graduate and so and so. Therefore, uh, children transform from resource to expense. Therefore, decrease the rate of birth. And finally, stabilized around 10 per thousand. This is the process of uh, demographic transition. Each modernized society perform, but this is a model, only a model. A real situation take to the model, and the differences between the model and the real processes have to understand which happened, really, in this society, in this place. And this process, we can divide four phases. The first phase is, this is the traditional phases. Traditional study, high mortality, high fertility. The second one, the second one, not only high, uh, 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 high uh, increase of, uh, of uh, population, but generation by generation outnumber. Each following generation outnumber the former one. This is the second one. The third uh, process 
uh, there is a positive of, uh, of uh, demographic uh, productivity, but generation by generation, it decreases the number. And finally, the fourth is a modern steady phase. This is the reason why the exponential trajectory don't, uh, uh, won't uh, continue until the uh, human disaster. Okay, the second one, energy per capita. Energy per capita. If we are looking at human evolution, at the beginning of human evolution, in the, for example, in the hunting-gathering society, which were the source of energy? Mass of human. Mass, no more, no more. When appeared the uh, early civilization, completed the muscle of human with the, uh, muscle, the muscle power, drug power of domesticated animal, camel, cattle, horse, and, and, and so on and so, and the simple devices like wind and uh, like a water mirrors. No more. And the next milestone, uh, industrial revolution. When introduced the fossil fuels. And, rose to the, not uh, how the name is, uh, geological level, a human activity. Because recently, in consequence of uh, application and, and, uh, and using of, uh, of uh, fossil fuels, the energy which able to mobilize by human, the same that the earthquake and volcano and the cyclones. Therefore, a human, uh, a, a human evolution step into the new phases. Not by chance, the recent time named Anthropocene. As a geological Anthropocene. Age of human. Age of human. Because a human became a global player in geological level. Even. Okay? And uh, information. Information. Uh, a cultural revolution, very important uh, uh, element of human evolution. Not necessary to to invent the warm water, generation by generation, but uh, able to pass the information. The first phase, oral cultural history, the people stab the information, generation by generation, in oral forms. The next uh, milestone invent to the um, invent of the of the of the um, uh, writing system. But very interesting. Somebody know the name of Noah Chomsky? Noah Chomsky. Chomsky. It's a linguistics. Uh, and he introduced a um, universal grammatical system. You know which is universal grammatics? Yeah. I believe it's the one that each and every single human being is born with the innate ability to learn any language, any languages, except if they uh, have some mental illnesses, but only up until a certain age, after which they will just. Basically, by just everyone be able to function in a society. Everybody listen? More or less. Okay, uh, I <laughs> translate. Sorry, uh, but thanks a lot. Uh, anyway, on the brain, it's, it's a high, it's a main way of linguistics. It's not a, a heretical idea. It's a main way. On the brain, the system of language, it's introduced. Not only it's constructed, it exists inside of the brain. The logical grammatical system. Only the words, it's a open and, and, and empty brackets. Somebody, somehow, in genetical reason, there is a construction of language inside of the brain. The logical system, without words. If somebody born in Japan, into Japan, or Inuit community in Canada, or Hungary, or everywhere, introduce uh, words. But the logical system, the construction, there is in genetical sense. Therefore, a people, a, a baby, able to learn unbelievable quickly a language. Unbelievable quickly. This is the uh, universal grammatical, grammatics or grammatical system. Good. Uh, uh, writings and, uh, and the printing and finally it's a uh, uh, digital uh, information making. It's exponential. Good. Look at the world economy system. We are over the time, over the space. Look at the world economy system. Um, uh, 
very important that I spoke to you that in the history, in the history on the historical discipline, there are generation by generation a big question. The first big question, formation of national state. The second one, uh, history of economic activities at the beginning of 20th century. Uh, examination of society, demographic processes and social structures. A change of value system and mentality in the 60s of 20th century. And, and uh, recently, the last big question of the history, uh, it's a name, a green history, uh, uh, concern a double nature of human. Double nature of human, uh, partly, uh, it's a double nature mean that I am not only cultural, culture beater, but an animal too. It's possible I told you this story, no? No? I, 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 live, I spend my uh, not only late childhood and the early young period in student hostel. And I identified that I am animal for the first time in the student hostel. Um, I remember one story. Uh, I, I was a student of uh, Second University, uh, Herman Otto student hostel in the other side of the Tissa River. I woke up one night and I was hungry. And uh, respect of uh, private property, not so high in the student hostel. Therefore, if somebody finds something, eight. There is an a inhabitant of student hostel. No? Dangerous place, dangerous place. Uh, but uh, the people learn some technology which help a life very much. For example, I, I, I am an uh, inhabitant of student hostel. Uh, I was 14 years old, 40 years old. And I lived in, uh, in, uh, in Hungary, of course. Uh, I take into the uh, student hostel experience the military service, <laughs> similarly. I lived together 25 people, no intimacy. Uh, I lived in, uh, in Odessa, student hostel, recently under siege. Uh, but very interesting, uh, my, somebody lived in Odessa? Odessa? Nobody? Odessa, I, I, unbe unbelievable place, unbelievable place. Somebody know which kind of the rocks cover the harbor? Cover of Vesuv, volcano of Vesuv. Mm -hmm. The uh, merchants who exported uh, grain in the uh, last decades of the 18th century, uh, 19th century to Italy turn back empty ship of grain. And somebody imagine so good walking in Odessa harbor on the rock of Vesuv and paid. It's a very Russian, sorry, there is a Russian student. It's a prejudice, but it's, it was a very, very Russian. Cover whole of the harbor with, with uh, rocks of uh, Vesuv. And when it arrived, it happened in the 80s, uh, it was a very uh, short period of different, uh, uh, different uh, uh, prime secretary of Communist Party. It's one year, uh, I remember, Chernyenko, nobody remember for that, and later, before Andropov, later Chernyenko. Uh, uh, okay, it's, it's a very strange period. And uh, uh, I remember when we arrived at the student hostel of Odessa, very bad, bad quality of the tuner system. Therefore, the first night when we switch out the light, appeared army of cockroaches. Unbelievable. There is somebody experienced that it's walking more hundred cockroaches. <laughs> And one I killed in my ears. <laughs> we, wasn't, we weren't able to, to uh, sleep. And we uh, tried to solve this situation, uh, bought in the, in the uh, uh, shop uh, different weapons against the cockroaches, but the background of the cockroach is so high, we have no chance for that. Therefore, complain to the director of uh, student hostel, he knew about the cockroaches, it's, very, it's closest friend of the student or to us. Uh, and finally, we ask suggestion from Russian student. They didn't understand our problems, but finally, uh, we are not chance against the, uh, against the cockroaches, and suggested to us 
drinking half liter of vodka before sleeping, it's work. It's work. Uh, if somebody has short drink, huge quantity of short drink, drink quickly, it's turn out the bulb from the brain half hour later, and cockroach is walking on our body, but no bother. If somebody has a problem, uh, this is the tested form of the solution. Okay, uh, good. Yeah, but turn back my story. I woke up in Hungary, Hungarian uh, student hostel, and uh, uh, I remember that uh, after some hesitation, I decided I'm going to the fridge, open and ate if I will found. It's happened. I woke. It's after midnight. Nobody on the corridor. I woke to the fridge, open the door of the fridge. In the fridge had two thing, a bomb which lighted inside of the uh, fridge and half half butter, small piece of the butter. After a short hesitation, I ate the butter. You are such experienced, no? Not good, not good, not good. And. Uh, the last part of the night, I try to not vomit into the pillow, but I behave not like a predator, but like an omnivore, my closest friend in the pig. But if somebody hungry, it's very high motivation. Therefore, I was animal. A lot of similar story I had, but very short time, and therefore no time for speaking about. Okay, this is the last question. Ecological thinking. Ecological thinking about the human. Good. Uh, uh, first generation of Annal is a French historical school introduced, he was the first uh, revolution against the uh, traditional historical thinking, uh, introduced a crucial co concept. The first crucial concept, which I will use in, the, uh, in this course, is to total. Is to total mean each of deeds which performed by human it's a subject of historical studies. Not only the deeds of general, deeds of king, emperor, and the great man, but for example, a real problem inside of the mouth may, from out or inside of the mouth, make something which necessary to clean, which is the good technology for cleaning the mouth, spitting, spitting, but in the European civilization, it's not accepted. But in the traditional Asian civilization, the spitting bowl, it's a generally accepted solution of that. Spitting into the bowl. It's luxury, it's a uh, ceramic and, and, uh, and more expensive. In the cheap version, it's a plastic version. But solution. Or look at the, for example, the clothes. It's possible, I told you. To you about the clubs. In the traditional time, it was a social code. If somebody approaching on the street in the traditional time, you are able to judge the age, social status, marital status, and the age. Not necessary to speaking with him. Therefore, historical to time means not only the great history is the history, everything is history, and able to uh, introduce to the historical uh, uh, paradigm of the past. Good. And the long durée, I spoke about former time into the long durée. Uh, the most famous uh, uh, member of the second generation of the, of the uh, Annal, uh, uh, Fernand Brodel, we, we spoke about the Fernand Brodel, and the first generation is Emmanuel de Rey Okay. How appear the imagination of, industry, uh, of uh, world economic system? The godfather the godfather of world economic system, Immanuel Wallerstein. He was an economist. And his basic exper experiences collected in Africa. Uh, university studies and university is a good place, but the most dangerous before the graduation. I remember on the last year, on the last year of my university studies, it was the general crisis. 
Why? Because during my long, not my, or our long uh, uh, school career, from the kindergarten, elementary school, secondary school, university, the most comfortable phase is the university. But when we approach to the closing our studies, realized have to go to work. Some undiscovered and dangerous place. I remember the rate of alcohol consumption in the last year of university studies. Why? We, nobody would like to go to work. It's a very dangerous place. New rules, new rhythm, new everything is dangerous. And the most tragical, if no offer of job, which happened with me, for example. The first year of my uh, career after the university, no real job, only fellowship, uh, uh, temporary work, and so on. So it's a very special situation, but under pressure, able to find a good solution. Okay, Immanuel Wallerstein uh, graduated at the University of New York, didn't receive job, which is the good, good, good solution traveled to Africa and participated in some program, economic and supporting program. And traveled to South Africa, Zambia, Kenya, and different countries, and realized the project of economic uh, recoveries failed each of them. And to the final question, why? introduced money, introduced capital, introduced knowledge, and failed. And finally concluded the reason of problem of African countries came from the historical past, from the age of uh, great geographical discoveries. And if some country receive bad cards, no chance for winning. Therefore, transform these experiences that the reason of inequality of different regions and different countries try to find the reason, the roots of that in the historical past. And he constructed and published the first volume of modern world system. Uh, two years later, Robert Brunner uh, published uh, Agrarian Roots of European capitalism. It's very important. Why? Because we are looking at the Middle Ages, which is the most important values of Middle Ages, which constructed by noblemen. Who is the good nobleman? A brave, a strong, there is a military skills, and no connection between capitalism. Because a good capitalist, a good businessman, a good deal, uh, broker, not a serial killer, like a nobleman. It's a problem. But Brenner verified that under the nobleman, nobleman cover appeared in the peasant level some form of the capitalism. I, later I will speak about that a little bit more, but one example. Uh, probably you know the plow which plowing the, the soil, the Arable land. One of the most important invention of European civilization, introduction, heavy plow. Why? Because the drought power which drawing the heavy plow, 10 animals. No family, enough draw animals for that. Therefore, necessary collaborate Three or four family. Fifty percent of uh, medieval, early medieval Europe, peasant, and the peasant society. On the case of plowing, learn the school of collaboration. Correct collaboration. Because everybody would like to take the same profit. And it's very important because not only the uh, political and the great man level appear, 
the uh, how the name is atmosphere of uh, of compromise appeared even in the level of Pisa. And for example, in we are looking at the European civilization, the proportion, general proportion of the nobility, one person, one person, or two, some region. And dominated by Pisa. And the Pisan society learned the mechanism and developed the mechanism making compromise. Good compromise with each other. Okay. The next milestone, uh, uh, German scholars introduced the concept of proto-industrialization. Industrialization. You know, somebody know which what means the industrialization? No? It means that before the real factory-based industrialization, a merchant developed a net for, network of taking out system. What means the taking out system? Majority of population lived villages everywhere. Each of villages had two, three, four, five artisan, part-time artisan, but artisan. And the merchant who would like to maximize the profit take a contract with them. Taking out system, moved devices, moved raw materials, and. In the traditional peasant lifestyle, a lot of free time. A lot of free time. Why? Look at the wheat culture. Wheat culture. On which time necessary to work in the wheat? Wheat, wheat, it's a cereal. Wheat uh, cultivation. Plowing, sowing and plowing, October, and harvesting in June. A lot of free time. A lot of free time. Therefore, before industrial evolution, High part, high proportion of peasant society had industrial practice. Therefore, when founded the first factory in Manchester, Birmingham, uh, Edinburgh, a generation of peasants who had home experiences of industrial activity moved to the great center of, uh, of industrial evolution. Therefore, so efficient. Uh, English Industrial Revolution. Because a trained peasant, industrial trained peasant generation moved to the uh, cities. Okay? And the last one, a Fernand brother published, uh, somehow unified the former, the former uh, blah, 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 uh, results and, uh, and books and studies about the capitalization and published the, the book Famous and Milestone the meaning book of civilization and capitalism. Okay, this is the picture about Immanuel Wallerstein, the most important volume of him. And very important, we have a time uh, looking Immanuel Wallerstein, because I spoke about uh, uh, and I speak about a lot of people, but much, uh, to my impression, a little bit more if somebody able to see him or, or listening some words of, uh, of uh, Wallerstein. There is a subtitle for that. I think what you describe is my uh, search for the appropriate unit of analysis and what I came to feel some 30 years ago is that all of modern social science for the last 150 years has had... It's a team co Teams conference. ...implicitly a unit which was in fact the state. Uh, and so we assume that social action occurred within the framework of the state. States had political structures, states had economies, states had cultures, states had um, uh, unities of various kinds, and each state was in some sense independent logically of the other state that were following parallel paths. And I came to feel that that didn't make sense fundamentally it didn't make sense, but that is not where social action occurred. It occurred within the framework of larger historical systems, which I call world systems. And then, yes, I thought that the modern world system was a break, a significant break for previous kinds of world systems, and that it was, took the form of a 
capitalist world economy, and that therefore to understand the modern world uh, and how it operated, one had to see it as a developing historical process of the creation of, a functioning of, and expansion of a capitalist world economy, which initially, I have to say, the word, word world does not mean the entire globe, it means a large unit. But in fact, one of the characteristics of the capitalist world economy is that over several centuries it expanded to incorporate the entire globe by the 19th century. So I, I shifted my emphasis to a different unit of analysis, which was that of the world system, and concentrated my concerns on the modern world system, which, as I said, was a capitalist world economy. And it's true that that then turned turned me to necessarily some basic epistemological questions. I didn't realize that at first, initially, but I realized that when I started getting criticized for not conforming to various epistemological norms, then I then realized for widespread uh, and oppressive, if you will, but in any case, I thought it correct. So it is true that I had to turn my attention then questions of what is a discipline, what are the boundaries of discipline, what's the logic of the discipline, uh, and then what I now talk of as what are the structures of knowledge uh, that we have constructed uh, uh, to frame the ways in which we think and the ways in which we uh, teach others to think, which is the university system, uh, and whether they are adequate, which I, I don't think they are adequate, I don't think they're correct, and I do think they're breaking down, but that's uh, uh, that's another story. Okay, uh, good. Uh, he died two years ago. That it's sorry. No. Oh. Good. Uh, Fennan Rodel was the other key person of. Uh, uh, formation, descri describing of the formation of, uh, of a world economic system, and look at one short presentation from Brodon. Yeah, it's, uh, he's uh, speaking French, but uh, there is an English. I'd like you to reflect upon is why are we here? Sorry. There is an English subtitle.
communes, au lieu d'examiner les choses à la verticale, vous allez les examiner à l'horizontale. Par une économie, à toujours une région centrale, un pôle, une sorte de centre division, avec euh, des conséquences pour être choisies, mais cette zone centrale, c'est une zone où le capitalisme existe, existe seulement dans la zone centrale. Au XVIIe siècle, il existe à Amsterdam, il existe peut-être dans certaines régions de la France, il existe en Angleterre, il existe peut-être en Hambourg, mais il n'existe pas ailleurs, du moins, de cette façon aussi nette à mon avis. Euh, ce, ces ensembles économiques, c'est ce qu'on appelle aujourd'hui, c'est un mot qui a été l'attitude de l'allemand, de Rex Gertschaf, c'est ce qu'on appelle l'économie monde. Non pas l'économie mondiale, l'économie du monde entier, mais l'économie du réseau, de la morceau de la planète. On dira par exemple, la Méditerranée est une, est une économie monde. Parce que vous voyez, c'est une belle Gertschaf, c'est une économie en monde. Alors le mot Rex Gertschaf, avec ce sens un peu double, signifie à la fois en allemand l'économie mondiale et l'économie monde. L'Europe est une économie monde. Alors, au cœur de l'économie monde, vous avez une sorte de chaleur supplémentaire. Dans les régions voisines, c'est déjà très, très différent, et dans les régions marginales et périphériques, ça n'existe plus. Alors, vous avez peut-être des moyens de production pour dire que je suis capitaliste au centre, au cœur, mais vous ne les avez pas dans les régions qui entourent cette région centrale, mais vous ne les avez certainement pas dans la périphérie. Et ce point de vue, ça peut être le Ok. Uh, and, uh... Uh, finally, a broader uh, approach to the uh, to this problem was very strange and very uh, very interesting because he described the history of the evolution of world economy uh, separated and divided three level. Daily level, it's a name I listed to quotidien. Everyday level, production of meals and production of of the beverage. It's a. F I didn't stop. Uh, uh, it's a daily level, daily level. The second one uh, used the surplus, a trade, the network of the trade, and started and closed this vision with the global level. It was the, uh, uh, it was the world economy system. And very interesting, the method of the Fernand Roda. One of, one of my professors participated in the project of writing this uh, uh, series, uh, three volumes of uh, 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 evolution of capitalism. And uh, uh, as I mentioned to you, a uh, uh, French education system and academic system very centralized. Therefore, Fernand Brodel had a huge money from the point of, not for the businessman level or uh, wolf of, uh, of uh, uh, Wall Street, but in the academic level, a huge money, and invited scholar from different countries, from India, from China, from Hungary, and uh, sat down around round table, and discussed about the problem and mentioned and uh, noted the key information. Therefore, use the local uh, scholar like a, a moving library. It's very interesting technology. Okay, turn back. The conclusion of them. Conclusion of them. Uh, we will continue with this slide, but some mention about the slide. Key concept of, uh, of Fernand Rodel, world economy, it's a frame of each economic system existed in the earth, and the world economy, world hyphen economy, mean economy mode in the French version, it's one unit of eco economic unit which behave like a closed construction. If we are looking in the 12th century, when started the career of world economy system according to Fernand Brother, had six world economy, world hyphen economy. It's a compact and, and independent unit. The most developed, China. According to Chinese, this is the normal construction of the world. First one, China. Some accident happened in the modern time, but the world turning back to the normal situation. First one, China. The second one, India. But very interesting, India, as a civilization unit, contained the most developed region. Somebody know which region of India the historical India was the richest region. Kerala? Is it Kerala? No? no. Bengalia, recently Bangladesh. Why? 
Because in the traditional time, the richest region, the most fertile plain region. And the great river came from Himalaya. It's alluvial plain area. It's very fertile. But recently, in the modern civilization, very different the indicator of the richness. And recently, one of the poorest countries of the world. Paradigm change. Islamic world is the third one. Western and Central Europe is the fourth, only the fourth. And Amerindian culture is the fifth. And Russia is the sixth one. Why Russia? It's independent. Because in, in, on that time, according to Fernand Rodal, Russia somewhere between the Islamic and the Christian civilization. Some period closer, and the China, of course, free uh, pause, among free pause, and some period closer to China, some other Islamic countries, some other to uh, uh, Europe. And only after decision, uh, Peter the Great closed to European civilization. Okay, we will continue a little bit more deeper analysis of this slide. 